Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Glory career mode with some power lead. This is episode number 65 and today we are back with two more games with our Buccaneers as we close out the calendar year with back-to-back -back road trips away against Leverkusen at the Bay Arena and at the Opel Arena against Mainz as well on Christmas Eve. Right now we are top of the table by several points as we aim to extend our gap on top of the table right now and pull away from Bayern as much as we can just before the halfway point of the season so far and there's some great news to start today's episode off as well because we've got some tournament prize money for progress in Deutsche Pokal and also Moses Oja has decided he's going to stay at the club as well he says he's got good news to share he's come to the realization he's pretty happy here I'm not really surprised to be honest we gave him the armband last season midway through the season when Sobiach was dropped and this season he took over officially as club captain and now he says he wants to stay and play play for this club and it wouldn't really have been a much of a disaster had he not given us that email because we know we could have just loaned him out on a short-term loan and then recalled him straight away in January it's very easy to just counteract the uh, the players that want to leave but either way it's good to know that naturally Ojo wants to stay and uh, he knows where his heart is he knows where his heart is and it clearly is here at the Minotaur so let's reward him for his uh well not exactly loyalty but uh, his decision to stay with a new contract regardless as he wanted one anyway and uh, we shall see if this time he decides to accept it and not throw his toys out of the pram. But still, let's move into the first game of today's episode as well as we take on Bayer Leverkusen away at the Bayer Arena. They right now are sitting in sixth place and are 16 points behind us right now. And as we're top of the table by 13 points, we have had an amazing first half of the season, winning 13 of our 14 Bundesliga games, the only loss being to second place Bayern Munich. We want to continue the unbeaten run. It's now 17 games without a loss in all competitions let's make it 18 and let's get a big win here at the ground where last season we confirmed champions league football with a win on the final day so by leverkusen first game today let's get the win come on some power league. the visiting team have been undoubtedly the best defensive team in the division but that defense will be put to the test here well they've got some good individuals at the back and they've also got great understanding across that back line First chance of the game coming to Bayer Leverkusen. Becker on the ball, plays it inside, and the shot was well blocked by Colin Kadir, and thank goodness it was as well. So I'm pretty sure Leverkusen would open the scoring there. And instead, we are through. This is this is the advantage of playing this formation. You go from defense to offense so quickly. And oh, Thomas Olivier, a man, should have made it 1-0. But I overran the ball a little bit, went a bit too close to the goalkeeper and just smashed it as quickly as I could with the left foot. And in the end, it was a pretty impressive save with the goalkeeper, but it was straight at him. That should have been 1-0. But on the other hand, we could have been 1-0 down there as, uh, as Leverkusen were through. Corner for St. Pauli, 21 minutes in. Valena is going to take it, whips one into the centre, and it's up in the air, and Selka went for it. It'll drop to Chicharetti, and the shot deflected by Baron Gartlinger. And if it wasn't, well, Chicharetti's reaction tells you all you need to know. That was destined for the back of the net. Valena's corner, Selka's header, side netting. Pressure already from St. Pauli. Can we get the breakthrough? Well, still 0-0 at the break as we go into the second half. Very frustrated with our first half performance. We had a couple of chances, but... Not really that many to report. Leverkusen had one noteworthy one, I suppose. But other than that, they didn't do much either. This game right now has got nil nil written all over it. And playing a two at the back formation, that should not happen. But here is Paulson looking to break the deadlock. Our top scorer this season waits for Dragovic to overcommit. Takes it round him. Tries to feed it inside. Gets it back. And goes for goal from a tight angle. And it's an easy save for the goalkeeper. Do you want to get a shot on target there? Test the keeper. It's been a while since we've had a shot. But an easy save, still nil-nil. Can we find that breakthrough at some point? Come on, come on, come on. Need the ball back now. Need the ball back now. Gonzalez finds Lars Bender into a Bubakar. And Kadir just steps in and says, give me that ball, son. That's mine. And now a chance on the break. Selka to Paulson. Uh, sorry, uh, Paulson to Selka. And Selka out wide towards a Mang. Should keep the ball in play. Does, turns, crosses. And in the middle is Paulson, who heads it off target. We're getting chances, but can't hit a target. Chance here for Leverkusen. For final finds Kevin Campbell. Good tackle by Kadira though. And I tried to release the ball. Couldn't do so, but this time I could. And Mang gets onto the end of it. And now a chance on the break here. Thomas Olivier and Mang. 
gets past one, plays it through to Yusuf Paulson, who's running through and shoots, and Haradiki makes the save, and oh no, Vendel just a pal, cleared it on the line, I think it might have hit the post as well, and the Brazilian left back gets it back to his goalkeeper, still 0-0, I cannot believe we've not scored in this one, so many chances, but still, it is 0-0, Chicharetti on the ball, through to Paulson, maybe this time, off the bar, and then a man's header is wide of the post, how is it still 0-0? Oh, look at how close that is on the goal decision system as well. Haven't had one of these in a very long time. But uh, Vendel somehow just about got off the line and, uh, and poked it out before it crossed. That is so, so unfortunate. I thought we'd taken the lead there. Just couldn't squeeze it in. Still nil-nil. Oh, possibly one final chance. Bailey wins it back. Pulls the controls. Gives to Chicharetti. Try your luck. Some from range. Deflected. Oh, it's gone in. It's gone in. Get in. Chicharetti will claim it. But what a stroke of luck that will win us the game in stoppage time. And all of our pressure eventually pays off. Shichiretti shot the flex off Lars Bender and loops over the goalkeeper. And we get ourselves the goal to win us the game in stoppage time. It's going to be 14 wins from 15 games. And sometimes you need a helping hand. And we certainly got a big one there. Shichiretti claims it is sick for the year already. But it would never have gone here. At least I don't think so. Had Lars Bender not deflected it past his goalkeeper and into the back of the net. And with virtually the final kick of the game, St. Pauli win it and Leverkusen lose it right at the death. A massive, massive victory for us. It keeps us top of the table by several points. And oh my word, sometimes you need a bit of luck. We had some bad luck last season. We get a bit of good luck here. Oh my word, what a thrilling finale. I mean, let's not kid ourselves, though. We deserved a win regardless. We were a much better team in this game. Far better side. Ten shots, seven on target compared to three on one. They may have had a tinty tiny bit more possession than us, but we were still the much better team and deserved the three points, albeit getting them in very lucky circumstances. And I'll give man the match to Colin Kadira for a 9.3 as he helped us see out the clean sheet and eventually the three points as well. What a big win for St. Pauli. Come on. I basically collapsed onto the back of my sofa at that moment as well. I was just, I couldn't believe it, man, seriously. When the shot was deflected, I was thinking it's surely going wide, but instead, it just looped over the goalkeeper perfectly into the back of the net. Sometimes you have bad luck moments, sometimes you have good luck moments. I say it all the time, it's why I never get angry that much when things don't go my way, because I know that eventually we'll have moments like that one. You know, it's the reason why I never really rage whatsoever, because I know eventually luck will balance itself out. Always remember that. Stay positive. If you're in a bad luck streak, remember, you'll get your good karma eventually. All right then, guys, so moving into the second and final game of today's episode, as you travel away from home to take on Mike to a sitting in 14th place with 15 points, only three wins from their first 15 games. But for us, we're 15 points clear at the top of the table right now with Bayern and Dortmund in second and third place with 27 points each. We've got 42, a plus 29 goal difference record as well. And after 14 wins in our first 15 Bundesliga games, it's looking likely that, that Bayern Munich loss at the start of the season is not going to be as disastrous as we were first fearing. But can't rest now, even though we are closing out the first half of the season. We still need to finish this calendar year strong and pick up the three points and avoid any slip-ups whatsoever to end the calendar year. So final game of today's episode, Mites away. Can we get the win and keep this good run going? I certainly hope so, and I believe so too. Come on, St. Pauli. Or well, even being 15 points clear with Bayern Munich in a division, you can't sit there and think that the title is done now. We're not even at a halfway point right now, so I'm taking nothing for granted and still taking every game as it comes, knowing we still need to win. Mane through for the first chance of the game. Lossell saves it and Selka heads it wide of the post, still nil-nil, but we need to keep on winning, you know, we are approaching every single game with the exact same mindset, and that means we can't allow us any slip-ups whatsoever, you know, we cannot afford to drop points in any game at all if we want to be crowned champions come the end of the season, because that 15-point lead will not last forever 
if you fail to get wins and buy and get theirs? Because it, it sounds obvious, I know, but last season we found it out very quickly. You know, we were in front by a few points, then buy and gradually got back into it, overtook us, and never looked back and coasted to the title. We can't let that happen this year. Manny down the left hand side, turning on the afterburners. Donati won't catch up, keeps on going, gets inside the area, takes his time, finds Kai Havertz, who puts it wide the post via a deflection. And Nani is going to take the corner, whips it into the centre. Moses won the header and Selk, I'm tapping circle like a madman. Davey, why do I start you in the league? You're terrible on a Saturday night. And this is Tuesday night, but you're still awful. Right, it's half time, so Davey Selk is coming off for Mario Gomez. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, did I not put him on the bench? There he is right there. Uh, Gomez on, Selk are off. He's 81 rated, but he's just... In, in the league, he's like he's 18 rated. I mean, seriously, it's, it's, it's really weird because, you know, last season in the Europa League, I won't try and deny it, he is the reason we reached the Europa League final. His 12 goals, I think it was, got us to the Europa League final, and we'll never, ever, ever forget that. You know, he's the reason we reached our first ever European final, and we're so grateful for that. But it's like Buhadu's in season one. You can't live off past glory, mate. At the moment, you're absolutely terrible. First chance of the half, and it could come to Mainz here as Klaus fizzes in across, but straight to Leno. We didn't really do much in the first half, but it was a bit like the Leverkusen game, really. Not too many chances in the first 45 minutes, and I'm hoping we'll spring into life in the second half, and maybe straight away here with Nani getting on the ball down this right-hand side. Brasinki comes across, Nani takes it round him, rolls it back towards Justin Kluivert, shot deflected, and it's a penalty! Penalty for St. Pauli! What's that for? Well, Cliver went to pull the trigger, and I think what might have happened is the number five slid in and put someone else down. Yeah, Gomez! <laughs> well, I mean, you can't really debate that as a penalty, can you? Mario Gomez, poor lad, just, just went flying from an off-the-ball tackle, and it's a certain penalty. So, Rodolfo Hara can give us the lead seven minutes after the restart with his first goal since returning from injury. I'm going to the top right, and he sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. And El Toro puts us in front. It is 1-0 for St. Pauli. I was wondering what the spot kick was given for. Now I know exactly why. Mario Gomez taken down big time. And to be honest, I'm surprised the old boy's still okay. That was an awful challenge. I mean, yes, I know he was trying to take down Cliver instead. But he just he two-footed tackled Mario Gomez off the ball. That was outrageous. So certain penalty and El Toro dispatches it right into the top corner. He's back from injury and back on the score sheet. He's got a few goals to catch up to Yusuf Paulson right now. He's six behind the Dane, but as he won the Golden Boot last year, you wouldn't put it past him getting back into contention. 1-0 St. Pauli, that's the most important thing though, and we take the lead. Here come mine, he's trying to respond instantly, but Klaus is out muscle by Kadira. I love Colin Kadira as Clivert finds Nani, and now a chance on the break here, Gomez on the ball, finds El Toro, El Toro through the gap towards Paulson, this should be two, and it is two, Yusuf Paulson says, Rodolfo son, you are not getting back in this golden boot race, whilst I continue to bang in the goals, and stay in red hot form, Mainz nil, St Pauli two, and our strike duo have scored in the same game for the first time in several, and does doesn't that feel good once again? El Toro to Yusuf, lovely finish, puts his laces through it and finds the back of the net. 2 0 St. Pauli and points surely in the bag. By the way, all three of our strikers were involved in that goal. Gomez to El Toro, El Toro to Paulson, Paulson into the back of the net. And that is why I'm loving this 2 5 3 because my strikers seem so in sync as well as, uh, as here come Mainz, but the danger is fully clear. And what a decision to bring on Gomez as well from the bench for Selker at half time. He's already won us a penalty, which we scored from, broke the deadlock, and he's also sort of uh, got a hockey assist, if you will, for our second goal. And now Clivert trying to play it inside, gets it back. Can he get a shot or cross away? In it goes to the centre, and Gomez, oh, it would have been great if you finished it. Can he still do so? Off the post! And clear, that would have been perfect timing. And Mario Gomez scored there, but he hits the post. Mites get it clear. Still 2-0, but um, yeah, we're, we're coasting to the three points now. And Selker is never playing again in the Bundesliga, that's for sure. So still 2-0 to St. Pauli with two minutes of normal time to go. As Clive walks in the cross, can we make it free? Yes, we can. El Toro gets on the end of it. And it's free for St. Pauli, two for El Toro tonight. What a great performance. And to close out 2019 with a big win here against Mainz, 3-0 will surely now be the final score. This is a great way to show that we are going to be the clear favourites 
to win the title this season. There is no slowing us down. It's going to be 15 wins from 16 games. An unbelievable start to the campaign. And Bayern Munich, I tell you this, we may have slipped up last year. It's not happening this year. We are going for your crown and we are surely going to win it at this rate. I question how resilient we are after our loss on match day three to Bayern Munich. Well, how's this for response? 12 straight wins and 15 points clear, possibly 18 points clear at the top of the table. And we're not even at the halfway point yet. What a fantastic first 16 games. Very similar stats in this game to the one in the Leverkusen game. 10 shots, 6 on target compared to 3 and 1. And once again, a tiny bit less possession. But unlike the Leverkusen game, a much, much, much better win. 3 in the final score. Deserve these 3 points and then some. And no surprises for man of the match. His first start since his lengthy injury. He doesn't need to be eased back into the first team. He was born ready. Rodolfo Howard with 2 goals and an assist in a perfect 10 as we get the three points. And so to end today's episode off, we are going to take a look at the academy update, the squad report, the full standings as well across all our competitions. And as you can see as well by that email just after this one, the transfer window has now opened as well as January is here. Of course, in the last episode, I asked for signing suggestions from you guys. Look, look at Dio. Doesn't, doesn't he look great? Doesn't Dio look great? We've got some unbelievable youth talents in this team. Romain Willem still looks amazing. Jules LeBlanc still looks amazing. Jules LeBlanc still looks amazing as well we got some great youth talents in this academy man absolutely love it but so yeah transfer window is now open now and uh, that's fantastic i did say in the last episode when i asked for signing suggestions we will probably make one or possibly two signings in january might sign a player on a pre-contract as well as we've done at least one every single season so far but i guess we'll have to wait and see but uh, the budget right now is 8.2 million pounds. And I have hinted at possibly selling one or two players in January. Uh, those players include Dudziak and uh, Justin Bilo as well. In fact, I'll show you my uh, to sell list right now. Uh, which is just those two players, uh, Bilo and Dudziak. I rarely show you my uh, transfer list, but uh, yeah, Bilo and Dudziak both on the transfer list. Although I might take Dudziak off because I like having him, in, having him in the team to score player. But uh, Bilo can certainly go if he wants to. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens there. We don't need to change anything though, because right now everything is going really well in the standings, and I'll show you that in just a moment's time. But first, the squad report, where you can see how our team is currently getting on as January is now here. Obviously, most players are improving right now. A couple of players are decreasing, such as Kala and uh, also Gomez, who are both retiring come the end of the season. I think I've said that in the past three squad reports now. I promise to shut up about it soon. But um, yeah, right now the, the players are looking really, really good. There's healthy attribute changes all across the board for most of our players. And um, it's just been a really, really amazing first half of the season. And, you know, coming into this year, we've had a chip on our shoulder, you know, failing to pick up any major honours in the first three seasons. We failed in the Europa League final last year against Spurs. We failed to hold on to top spot, surrendered it to Bayern and never caught up again. In season two, lost to Dortmund in Deutsche Pokal final. We've had a big chip on our shoulder and we've been determined to prove people wrong this year. But I still never believed we would have this type of first half performance. We have won 15 of our first 16 Bundesliga games. We won 5 of 6 Champions League games. We have won our first 2 Deutsche Pokal games and are through to the quarterfinals as well. I mean, it's been unbelievable. It's been truly unbelievable this first half of the season. And uh, I can't remember the last time... I had a first half of the season like this before in a career mode. It's been a while. It might have been the last one in FIFA 15. I don't know. It's been a very, very long time since I've played like this. We are on fire right now. We are 15 points clear. We are one game away from the halfway point, And we are the firm favourites to win the title this year. Bar a collapse, we have got already, I would say, at least one pinky finger on the title right now. Because we are just running away with things right now. And it's going to be very hard to stop us if no one can stop us. I mean, we really are unstoppable. And uh, it's just been an amazing first half of the season. But long way to go. Can't count our chickens just yet. Still a very long way to go. And uh, there is no reason why we won't collapse just like last season. But hopefully it won't happen this year. Uh, Deutsche Pokal then we're through to the quarterfinals. Take on by Leverkusen. Uh, 
so we just beat them uh, a couple games ago and uh, I'm certainly sure we can beat them in the cup as well even if we do rest all of our players and in the Champions League we'll be taking on in a round of 16 stage the French side Paris Saint-Germain so PSG in a round of 16 in the Champions League Leverkusen in the quarterfinals of the cup and right now top of the table in the league as well everything is coming together really nicely with St. Pauli it's been an amazing unbeaten run I think it's 19 games in all competitions and we are just on fire long may it continue but that will end today's episode of our road to glory career mode guys so a big thank you for watching I really hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed today's episode then please do consider leaving a like much love to you all have a fantastic day everyone and I'll see you for the next episode of our RTG career mode very soon where we'll make our first signings of the channel transfer window hopefully and uh try and get a couple more players into this already very good form St. Pauli side. See you soon. Bye.